Good day, you are here with Mayor Duval. Today I'm going to share with you how to save 59,000 Rand when you buy a property. This 59,000 Rand may even be more. So if you stay with me, I'm going to share with you all the secrets how you can save when you buy a property. Now this is really not a big secret, but I want to show everybody because we find that so few people know about how to save money when you buy a property. Our discussion today will focus on a couple of matters. The expert versus the novice when you buy a property. How to become an expert? How do I prepare myself? What if? We can show you later what, what if. If a pauper hits a fan, we're going to look at alternative finance property solutions and we're going to have some questions available. Now the expert versus the novice in buying a property. The secret is out there you do not make money when you sell your property, you make money when you buy your property. The reason for that is that any expert property buyer will tell you that you have to buy a property that's below the market price. So only a few properties are actually discovered and found that you can buy under the market price. So we see our expert property buyer maybe owns a few properties, the novice is still renting. The expert has got a tenant to pay off the home loan of a landlord, while the novice is paying off the loan of the landlord. The expert has leverage. He buys properties below market value, but the novice comes in and say, I don't have money, I don't have a deposit, I do not know how to get my foot into the door to buy a property below market value. Now if you stick with me today, I'm going to share all these secrets with you. The cash flush expert says, Easy for me to buy a property, and the novice says, Yeah, I struggle to save a deposit. The amazing news is that there's already a deposit available for you as a first time buyer. Now, we see in 2020 that 53% of all home loans are coming from first time buyers. So, first time buyers have woken up and they realize I can actually own my own property. But the bad news 56% of home loans are declined. I wonder, wonder, you ask yourself, why is this? The banks are bending over backwards to give us home loans when it's the best time ever in 53 years to buy a property. 48% of buyers still, however, require a deposit. So it's maybe not 100% correct to say that you will always get a 100% home loan because only 40% of home loans are required not to pay a deposit. So, let's look at the research we've done. We see and we know that a home is the biggest, biggest investment you will ever make. However, we find that buyers are doing a lot more research buying a new bicycle, a new cell phone, a new car, than they actually go out and buying the biggest investment, that is a house. Also tying you down to a home loan that you have to pay back over 20 years. So you go out and you do very little research. So we ask ourselves, and how do we share this? How do we I become an expert in the process of buying a house and my own property? And the secret again is educate yourself. Empower yourself with knowledge. If you are empowered, you can actually become an expert and discuss your property deal with your landlord, if you want to buy from him, or with a seller, or with a estate agent. Through education, we realize you have to do it online. Now with COVID and even past COVID and and everybody is eager to learn online. Number one, understand what will be required from you as a home buyer. Number two, locate your position. We always say that if you want to go from A to Z, you want to travel somewhere, first you use your GPS to determine where am I right now? And where do I want to go? Where do I want to end? I want to end up as a homeowner. So once you've determined where am I right now, you can decide then how much money, or you can find out, do I have in my budget to be able to buy this property? And now is the thing to buy and find the right property. You need all the support you can. And that's why we develop educational videos. And these videos will take you through this to educate, inform, and then help you to actually understand the home buying process. So we realize we're doing a little bit different the way around. Once you have watched the videos you can now read the book. Normally you first read the book and it comes out in a movie form. In this case, watch the videos and we'll send you a booklet how to go about to buy your properties and your own property. 
But first we educate and inform people. Go back to the basics. Determine your budget. We've even developed an app called Mobile to Budget where you can track your spending. You can determine this month was I under budget, was I over budget. Remember if you're going to buy a property, you're going to start paying hidden costs that you didn't have before. You're going to have to pay rates and taxes and levies. You're going to have to provide for maintenance of your property. So we decided let's put this all in one format. We provided an online education how to go about to buy your own home. Now me as a property buyer, I want to be informed, I want to be educated, and I want to be empowered. Because there are a couple of building blocks that I need to start taking and putting together and stacking up on each other to be able to own my property. What is the affordability I have to qualify and afford this property? Can I make use of money from the government called FLISP and use the money from the government as a deposit? What, do I have all my FICA in, in place? Do I have money for a deposit? Now we can actually change this block around and add this FLISP deposit that we can get as a deposit. Then I also need to go out and find the home loan I can qualify for. Because if I do need property finance, I never will go out and first buy the property and then start scratching around what home loan I can qualify for. You're never going to shop with an empty wallet and then decide I want to buy stuff worth 2,000 Rand. You first check in your credit card, your bank account, your wallet, if you have enough money and then you go out and buy a property. And then you determine the property price and the type that you want to pay. So for finance, you've got to ask a question, what will a bank require? We say that, start to think how a bank thinks. It's no use you come there with your own thoughts, because you've got to think like a banker. What will a bank require from you as a property buyer to be able to qualify you for a home loan? And you've got to think like outsmarting the bank. Think of this as a game, that the bank thinks of, about a home loan on a certain way, and you've got to outfox the bank and outsmart the bank how to do that. So how to do that? First, understand the three basic requirements of a home loan. Number one, what is your credit profile? If you've got a bad or a low or a red credit profile, most likely the bank will not assist you and entertain your home loan application. If you have enough affordability, then maybe you can buy the property, but the bank will look at roughly one third of your income versus expenses, and that will determine what home loan the bank will be able to give you. But remember, all your credit that you have to pay is also brought into consideration. The bank looks at quite a lot of past payment history and also new accounts, everything that combines there with your credit profile and your affordability. But then also important is your loan to value. No bank will give you more money than the valuation of a property, maybe for first-time buyers, they will add another 5% to enable you to pay for the legal and the transfer costs. So once you've got these three ingredients, you can actually go out and start looking for a property. But you've got to determine your own credit profile, your affordability, and do you have money to put down for your transfer costs, your legal costs, your bond registration costs. So these are all the hidden costs that you actually, a lot of buyers do are not aware of. So what if? What if, what if my credit score is low or bad? We often find that people say, this decline by the bank stopped my home journey. We see that 56% of home loans are declined. And we say, do not let this flat tire stop you in your journey to become a home buyer. Because a flat tire can be fixed. Sometimes you bring in a professional, sometimes you have to do it yourself. But do not let a flat tire fix your home loan journey. Number one, First, check out your credit score. There are many processes where you can actually go online and you can do your own credit score because you do not want to start the home buying process with a flat tire. You're going to end up in the dustbin and most likely the bank will not come back to you and say, can I help you? I see that you are in the dustbin and I would like to assist you. No, what they do, is they go to the next customer. So first do your credit score and once you've got a flat tire in respect of your credit score, fix it. Get professional assistance and help to do that if you can't do that yourself. If your credit score is good, now we can just proceed and do business. So bring in professionals. We've actually teamed up with a company called Octogen and they are our debt repair specialists and professionals in this game. Now the next question is what if? What if I do not have enough money for a deposit or legal fees? Luckily, 
realize money available for first time buyers already. It's called FLISP. FLISP stands for Finance Link Individual Subsidy Program. Now let's unpack FLISP a little bit more. The subsidy bands for FLISP actually starts at 3,500 at one rand, and then you can get 121,000 subsidy from the government. If you earn 22, you can get 27,000. 960 from the government. So it's amazing money that's lying available for first time buyers to put down as a deposit. And we even have a FLISP calculator for you. You can type in your amount that you earn. Remember, I work on gross income and it will kick out the FLISP subsidies for you. Two years ago, the FLISP subsidies were changed tremendously. It went up from if you earn 10,000, you get 49,000 Rand. Now you get 88,000 Rand. 15,000 Rand used to give you a 20 fell rand subsidy. Now that subsidy has been gone up to 62 fell rand, even much better. It's triple the amount of money available for a first time buyer to get to use as a deposit or to use as transfer and bond cost when you buy a property. 22 fell rand didn't even qualify for a government subsidy. Now you can get 27,960 fell rand. So you can go to the FLIS website, you can type in the amount, and it will indicate for you how much you qualify for. The FLISP calculator is electronically geared that assists you to work out your FLISP subsidy. So you can scroll down and you can work out your FLISP subsidy. Now a question comes up, who is FLISP targeted at? It's first time buyers who earn between 3,501 and 22. You must never have the benefit of a housing subsidy or owned a property before. You must be a first-time buyer and a South African citizen. You must have a dependent, financial dependent, like a spouse or a child or even a parent. And you must have an approved home loan from a financial institution. These are the big banks, APSA, Standard Bank, FMB, and NetBank. Well, the good news is that in certain provinces, even if your home loan has already been approved, you can also apply for a retrospective FLISP repayment but go and check it out with each province because each province has got a different timeline. So this, this subsidy can be used various, various, various ways. One as a deposit, reduce for home loan, and or you can actually buy for more and add your FLISP subsidy on top of your purchase price. You can refund that into your bond if you're really taking transfer, only available in certain provinces. And also in certain provinces, you can cover your transfer and bond registration fees. So if you use it as a deposit, I'm going to show you one example. If you buy for 410 and that's your income, you put your prices for 10, you put down 70,000 rand from the government, you add legal fees. So the good news is that you can apply for a smaller home loan. Now we all know it's much easier to qualify for a bond of 364 than 410 because a bank will see you as contributing that loan to value, that deposit. You don't ask your bank anymore for 100% deposit. Your interest rates will be lower. You can negotiate a much better home loan if you use your sub subsidy to put down as a deposit. Now I started doing some calculations. We start being creative. We say, how can I save 59,000 Rand when I buy a property on my home loan? And the answer again, maybe you know it by now, use your FLISP subsidy. If you earn 15,000 Rand a month, I use this calculation, and we said 15,000 Rand will bring me a bond of 649,000 Rand. I worked on an interest rate of 7.75%, and also remember that whenever you buy a property, do a stress test on yourself. Add 2% on top of the prime rate, currently at 7%, and see if interest rates go up, if you'll be able to survive this. Now, the home loan that we could earn, or we could get on 15,500, comes down to 649,000 Rand. Now, the amazing thing about this, this 649,000 Rand home loan can actually help you to qualify on your FLISP subsidy for 59,000 Rand. So if you take your 59,000 Rand and you end up only paying less for your property, this is amazing. You buy property now like a property a seasoned property investor and you buy the property under market value. This is really amazing for any home buyer. Where do I find these properties now? There are many out in the market. We've looked at one development example, the Glen coming up. 
And they are really buyers that properties that you can buy in that price range and making use of your subsidy. Now the second gem I want to share with you is to be able to pay off your home loan much faster. You can save even more. Now if you use your FLISP subsidy, or you can just save money every month by paying a little bit of extra money into your home loan. But let's use FLISP deposit. Let's look at a monthly salary of 90,000 Rand, payable over 13 years, and we work on an interest rate of 8.75. Remember this interest rate is much higher than you ought to get in the market, because currently the interest rates are 7%. If you work on a home loan on that, payable over 13 years, this is the payment that you money bond that you will get 724,000 Rand but now you say I'm going to start working clever I'm going to take my deposit that I get from the government of 42,531 and I'm going to pay that into my home loan let us see how this will benefit you if you actually take this money and you don't stop and start paying less on your home loan you actually continue to pay the same home loan every month now let's look at the original payment over 13 years, 5,700 Rand every month. Now we stay with the 5,700 every month. We find that we pay back the home loan six years and four months earlier. We save a whopping 391,000 Rand on a home loan of 724. That is more than 50% of the capital amount of the bond that we save. This is one of the most amazing saving exercises we can do by using your government subsidy. Do not reduce your monthly repayment. Stay with the same amount and you'll be able to reduce your home loan six years and four months and save 391,000 Rand. So if you want to check what government subsidy you can qualify for, how do you start? You first check what home loan you can qualify. So we actually registered and put together a website and a platform where you can check out your bond and FLISP affordability. So you can go to this website, maybe take a screenshot, write it down, https flisp.mybondfitness.co.za. This will help you to actually go through the process and check online what home loan and what government subsidy you can qualify for. The ultimate aim is to enable to give you a certificate to say congratulations, your initial FLISP subsidy is 34,000 Rand. Your home loan amount that you can get is 650. If we combine that, you ought to qualify for a home loan of 684. Now you have the power in your hand to go out and find a property and negotiate the best purchase price ever. Again, we say do not stop only at looking at one property finance option. We also add to the picture a normal home loan, a home loan with a government subsidy, rent to buy or installment sale, or even pension back loans. Don't forget, any of these property finance solutions can actually help you to help you to buy a property. Don't get stuck with only a home loan, particularly if you're a first time buyer, look at the government subsidy that can save you thousands thousands of rands. So online for this application we made it very simple. If your home loan is already approved, you can either go to the blue um, button on the left hand side, on the right hand side if your home loan is not yet approved. But let's take you through a couple of steps. There's the website again and the questions we will have is do you want to save 121,000 rand? Because that is the maximum subsidy you can get. Or do you want to save 20 7,960 on buying a property. And this, I hope I have learned, I have learned a lesson preparing for this, and I hope that you have also learned how to go about and save anything from 121,000 Rand to 27,000 Rand when you buy your first property. So questions that come around quite often are, for example, how will the money be paid out? People think that they will receive it in the bank accounts. This will be paid into your home loan account or your attorney. Do I qualify if I'm self-employed? Yes, indeed. It's only, not only reserved for the few and that are, that are received um, standard and regular paychecks. You can also do that if you're self-employed. I'm interested in building a new house, a home. Do I qualify for FLISP? Yes, indeed. 
one of the requirements for FLISP, it, but it must be a completed house or must be a new house with building plans that you're going to construct. If I want to use a FLISP money to renovate, unfortunately not possible because this money is payable directly into your home loan account. How long does the process take? Now that's an interesting question because we find that each province has got their own process application, their timelines, and particularly everybody seems to be going back to their offices now after COVID and since level one. And we find that applications are speeding up a little bit. For the last three, four months, it's been challenging for the departments to work from home and get the process done. I was previously allocated an RDP house. I can now afford my own home. Do I qualify for FLISP? Unfortunately not, because remember that you must be a first-time buyer and an RDP house will rec recognize or register you as an existing homeowner. Can my parents be considered as beneficiaries? Indeed, yes, on the condition that they do not own a property and they are true financial dependents. Does my beneficiary need to reside with me? Those are questions that we can all answer. If you assist us, if you contact us, that we can assist. These are a couple of useful and helpful websites. FLISP is there to assist you with your home loan application. Bond Indicator is there to assist you with your pre-qualification. We offer legal assistance. And the property toolbox is all the property tools that you require in one box to assist you to go out and own your own property. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And we hope when you buy a property, you are going to get the benefit of the best savings as a first-time buyer. Do not forget about a government FLISP subsidy. Thank you very much. Now that brings us to the end of this discussion, how to save 59,000 Rand. But remember, this saving is not, is not only 59,000 Rand. It depends on the sliding scale, and it works on the basis of how much you earn, and then they can determine your pre-qualification for a government subsidy. Thank you very much.